Yellowstone supervolcano earthquake activity from rising magma, hot groundwater movement, and tectonic movements. This is by the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory USGS site. From 1,500 to 2,500 earthquakes typically occur every year within Yellowstone National Park, the area of Yellowstone supervolcano, of course, and its immediate surroundings. Although most are too small to be felt, these quakes reflect the active nature of the Yellowstone re region and one of the most seismically active areas in the United States. Every year, several earthquakes of magnitude 3 to 4 are felt by people inside and outside the park. Well, actually, even more than four. We just had one a few days ago that was at 5 magnitude and was downgraded to 4.4, although the Yellowstone announcement, the Caldera Chronicles, did not make any mention of that whatsoever. And that was just west of the new thermal area that was announced by USGS. Now going back to this, although rising magma and hot groundwater movement caused some earthquakes, many occur as a result of basin and range extension of the western United States. This tectonic environment created a series of regional faults that are responsible for large and devastating earthquakes in the Yellowstone region along the Teton and Hebgen Lake faults, most recently a devastating magnitude 7.3 and a 7.5 quake in 1959 had uh, victims. It caused also $11 million of damage. We're talking about $59, which was a huge amount. A majority of the damage occurred as a result of the large landslide that was triggered by the quake. And uh, you can see pictures here of this. Geologists conclude that the large earthquakes, like the Hebgen Lake event, are unlikely within the Yellowstone caldera itself because subsurface temperatures are high there, weakening the bedrock and making it less able to rupture. But quakes within the caldera can be as large as 6.5 magnitude. A quake of about this size that occurred in 1975 near Norris Geyser Basin was, of course, felt throughout the region. Earthquakes cannot be predicted, but modern surveillance conducted with seismographs, instruments that measure earthquake locations and magnitudes, and global positioning system GPS instruments that measure slow ground movements help scientists understand the state of stress in the Earth's crust that could trigger earthquakes as well as magma movements. Now, the way they monitor earthquakes, we have are, of course, the uh, daily uh, quake notification. And they are going to be from uh, very small to uh, whatever uh, magnitude they are in the Yellowstone area and going all the way up to uh, Montana where we had quake swarms lately in the area of the uh, long, the um, two uh, twin volcanoes, the Crow Peaks and the uh, uh, Longhorn, I think, I can't remember it really. Uh, and the quake uh, clusters are still going on. But of course we have to realize that this area of north of Yellowstone Lake in Montana is basically on the fault line north to south that runs through Yellowstone and goes all the way down to southeast Utah where we've had other quake swarms as well for the past couple of weeks. And uh, now concerning the deformation, monitoring deformation Yellowstone National Park, which is of course due to the tectonic movements and the water buildup, the um, area of the caldera has subsided, whereas the Norris Geyser Basin, where we have the steamboat geyser that has erupted over 30 times last year and at least 12 this year, Norris Geyser has been rising. So, continuous recording and temporary deployment of Global Positioning Systems GPS receivers and benchmarks 
on solid moment, monuments are uh, employed at Yellowstone to precisely record their positions. The time variations over days, months, years, etc. provide the velocity in centimeters per year of the site relative to rest of the points in Yellowstone and the rest of the North American continent. The velocity fields thus map spatial variations of the ground due to such volcanic processes as magma and hydrothermal transport and fault motions released to earthquakes. Measurements of ground monitors using GPS at Yellowstone provide a method of monitoring its activity, volcanically and tectonic process, tectonic processes that are necessary for understanding the properties and locations of the sources, as well as providing information on possible pre-monitory uh, motions that precede a volcanic or an earthquake event. The GPS stations are maintained by the Plate Boundary Observatory via UNAVCO. The data are transmitted via radio and satellite links to various grounds around groups around the world for recording and processing. GPS data plotted through the YVO monitoring CERT interface are processed by UNAVCO. The uh, Norris temperature now. The Norris Geyser Basin temperature in 2003. Back then, activity in the Norris Geyser increased as scientists logged higher ground temperatures and witnessed a greater number of geyser eruptions. In order to better understand the hydrothermal system at Yellowstone, temporary network of monitoring equipment was installed, which was eventually followed by the installation of a more robust network. An article titled Tracking Yellowstone's Activity is published in 2012, uh, sorry, April uh, 2011. Uh, issue of Earth Magazine focusing on scientific research underway at Norris Geyser Basin. As we know, that's where we have the Steamboat Geyser, also Echinus Geyser, Constant Geyser, Opalesque Spring, Pork Chop Geyser, Grays Lakes, Tributary, Tantalus Creek, Vixen Soul, and Nufar Lake Air. Now, Norris Geyser has long been known as the highly dynamic recent Evidence implies that the area may be highly responsible to earthquakes, responsive to the earthquakes and ground movements associated with the inflation and deflation of the Yellowstone caldera. In an effort to better document changes in water flow and heat discharge from various variant parts of the basin, WVO recently installed a series of radio-equipped temperature sensors the equipment is purchased, uh, installed with funds made available through the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act. Now the measurement sites, 10 sites are currently monitored. Three sensors are in geyser outlet channels, two are in hot pools, three are in stream channels, which three, I don't know. There are steam channels, one measures soil temperature and control site others of uh, the air temperature at uh, nearby Cold Lake. The data can also be compared with data from a nearby Tantalus stream gouge, which measures the uh, water flow and temperature of Tantalus Creek, the dominant drainage from North Geyser uh, Basin. And unlike the radio equipment temperature sensors, the stream gauze utilizes a sizable solar portion solar panel and sends data every 15 minutes via satellite uh, uplink. The geyser outlet channels, rapid temperature increases in geyser outlet channels typically reflect increases in the flow due to eruptions of nearby thermal features. As an example, in the graphic here and below, temperature measurements taken from constant geyser on September 20th, 2010 indicate an eruption approximately every 40 minutes. Stream channel temperatures. Um, you can also click site names to access temperature graphs. These temperatures reflect both meteorological conditions, solar radiation and air temperature, and the amount of flow from nearby thermal features. Rapid temperature increases can reflect geyser eruptions or other changes in the water discharge. Rapidly, uh, rapid temperature drops may be caused by 
precipitation and comparison of the different channel temperatures as well as air temperature control station can reveal specific parts of the basin affected by increasing hydrothermal discharge. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.